Hi, my name is Mike and I own Mike's Carburetor Parts. You can find parts uh, for most uh, carburetors on my website at www.mikescarburetor.com. Mike's uh, you can also Google uh, Mike's Carburetor Parts and uh, I'll, should come up at the top. I'm working on a uh, Rochester 2G. Actually, this is a 2GC. Um, this will be a uh, in several parts as a series. Uh, the first part, I'll just kind of go over a few things. And um, um, to get the complete series, uh, you have to be a registered customer, and that simply means you buy something. When you buy something on my site, you be sure to register. Uh, um, and then I give you access to the full video, and, along with a lot of other uh, technical information. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, to start out with, uh, like I say, this is a 2GC, and uh, the 2G is a manual choke. 2GC uh, means that it's a uh, automatic choke, and in this particular uh, carburetor, the choke is actually mounted on the carburetor, you got like a 2GV, which is a uh, uh, same as a 2G, except the choke is what we call a divorce choke, and that means the uh, thermostat is mounted in the manif intake manifold, and then a rod comes up uh, from there and hooks onto your uh, uh, choke lever up here. Well, that's kind of stiff. I got to look at that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so. <clears throat> this particular carburetor, now generally uh, the 2G's when they came out they had a tag on the top uh, usually like a copper tag sometimes aluminum and it'll have the uh, carburetor number stamped on it. Um, unfortunately especially on these, it, it, these 2G's, the 2 jets, they're very popular carburetors, a bazillion of them out there and uh, they of course have been rebuilt over and over again and the uh, tags tend to get lost. Uh, people just leave them off, when, uh, unfortunately. And uh, a lot of the 2G's are very hard to figure out which kit that goes with it without the uh, tag number. And uh, I'll tell you, if you don't have the carburetor number, buying a carburetor kit, um, you're only guessing if you don't have the number. Now, once in a while, some of these 2G's uh, will have the carburetor number stamped in the side. And this one here is like 7026059. Uh, so stamped on the side here, so you, uh, that's the actual carburetor number for this one, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> all else fails, you will have to like get on my website, find the kits for the 2G, just type in 2G with a space kit, and it'll come up with all the kits for the 2G. Kind of look through, get one close to, uh, to the uh, time period we're talking about for your car. And, uh, and then you're just going to have to uh, match up the, the gaskets uh, shown on you know all my kits. Um, I take pictures of them with all the uh, parts spread out so you can see what they look like. And you will have to match up your gaskets. Also, a lot, a lot of times under technical information on, on each kit, I will put um, information like um, uh, the accelerator pump size, which is real important. That's different. It's usually... Uh, one of the big things that's different on different 2G, 2 jets. Uh, so you can look at that. Also, um, a lot of times I'll put pictures of carburetors on there so you can kind of match it up. Anyway, that's the best you can do. Just look at your float bowl and uh, uh, like this and, and, and you look at the gaskets that are online and, and uh, you can probably figure out which kit it is from, from there. As you can see, this one wouldn't work. Okay? However, kit comes with several. There's your other one. So this was the kit. Anyway, so <clears throat> I, I got the kit for this one uh, going by the carburetor number and you can see it comes with the flange gaskets, uh, the bowl gasket. There's another flange gasket depending on the uh, type of car. Uh, lots of little small parts, new check balls in there. Uh, <clears throat> this particular uh, carburetor has the uh, replaceable uh, cup right here and this happens to be a three-quarter inch cup by the way anyhow it has a little kit here and uh, 
uh, insulation instructions on how to replace the cup. Which okay, that's all they ever wears on these things. So uh, a lot of the Rochesters, that's how they send them. Instead of sending the complete uh, accelerator pump, uh, you got your needle and seat, and uh, lots of various uh, small gaskets. There's your throttle throttle body gasket and uh, the choke gasket. As you can see, there's several different throttle body gaskets. Uh, I also saved the old gaskets. Uh, I try to be careful not to mess them up when I take, take the carburetor apart. And um, assuming these were correct to start with, you can match these up with the new gaskets. And uh, it comes with a good instruction sheet with an exploded view, uh, cleaning, reassembling, some special instructions on, on um, how to set things on, on the bench. And uh, as you can see, lots of uh, information on, on adjustments. And then on the back is your uh, data, data table. So you go by it depending on your uh, uh, type of car. Uh, you, know, you find your car in here like Cadillac, uh, all 1958, and it'll tell you, tell you the float level, float drop, etc., uh, etc. Et so that's a kit. All right, so uh, this is going to be part one. And... Uh, um, Oh, one other thing is uh, this carburetor came with a nitrofill float, and whenever I see these, I always try to replace them, either with another nitrofill or a uh, brass. In this case, I carry the brass ones. Um, sometimes you can't get the brass; you got to use the nitrofill again. It just depends on what they make these days. You know, they're uh, discontinuing stuff about as fast as they can anymore. Anyhow, the nitrofill, the reason I uh, replace these, uh, over time they tend to absorb fuel. And uh, I have had trouble with these, uh, you know, reusing them and, and then have a lot of trouble with the carburetor. So I just automatically toss these out and put a new uh, float in it. And uh, it just it just isn't worth messing with. So, And in this particular one, uh, I'll end up with a brass one. So uh, let's see, as far as cleaning, uh, you know, my cleaning process, I use ultrasonics, probably different for yours. And, so I'm not going to go through that too much, but uh, uh, one thing I make sure of, I make sure all these little passageways are clear, whether you blow through them or, or whatever, just make sure they're not stopped up, uh, especially these two right here. Uh, you know, when you use your accelerator and you're pumping gas through it, uh, it comes out through these two little holes. If one of them's plugged up, it's only going to go into one side of your carburetor, uh, things like that. So just make sure everything is open and clean. Um, before you get started. And that, that's basically it for this part, so uh, I'm going to uh, get ready and we'll go to part two of doing the actual rebuilding. Uh, thank you for watching.